And hello, it's Saturday the 15th of September 2012. A warm welcome along to today's United Kingdom Talk. My name's Chris Reardon. Well, I've had to tell someone off, dear. I've had to tell someone off today. In the co-op just down the road there. It was outrageous. There I was, quietly going among my business at the bread bit at the back. At the back there's like a little bread counter. Now the co-op, it's like, like a... Like, a, it's more of a convenience store than a supermarket. You know, it's very small. Um, big enough to, to have to walk around several aisles, but it's not like one of your big supermarkets like, like you know, like Waitrose or Walmart or, or um, Coles in Australia. It's not like, it's not, not as big as that. It's a little one. And so I'm at this bread counter, and this woman came round the corner with pram and with small child on tow. And um, with, a, not young, not a young woman, oh no, she was about 60, about 60, something like that. And as she came round the corner, she knocked over a little stack of chocolate cakes. I knew they were chocolate cakes because I'd been spying on boys and girls, but I was very good. I was very good, I did not pick up those chocolate cakes and place them in my little basket with the bread. Certainly not, I walked past them. Anyway, so she's done this. And she's walked on. I said, excuse me. And she walked on. I said, excuse me. And she looked back, yes. I said, um, the cake's down there. She said, oh, they're not mine. I said, I know, you knock them over. Well, they're not mine. I said, we'll pick them up. She said, oh, um, I've got a bad back. And I just looked at her. And with that, with no problem at all, she bent down, picked them up, put them up, and then carried on walking, and then turned round and said, are you the owner? I said, no. She says, oh, I thought you were the owner. I said, no, I'm not the owner, I'm just a customer. Oh, right. I said, but it's, oh, what's the word I used? It's, I said, it's common decency to pick up something in a shop if you knock it over. And, and I walked off. How rude. I do hate things like that, don't you? It's just downright rudeness, isn't it? Eh? Like these people who drop paper all, all over the floor outside or chuck cigarette be butts out the window. It's just rude, rude, rude. So I'm sorry, I have had to tell off. I don't think I've ever told off an elderly person before. An elderly person before. And, you know, she did know she did it. And the little child is there as well. He saw, he looked, because he looked down at them. They knew they did it. You're just going to walk past and leave it for one of the poor staff to pick up. So there we are. I've had to tell. So please, to in bars, here's a good one. Now, as you know, I work in pubs and bars a lot. People nowadays, they will drop a glass on the floor, laugh with their friends about it, and walk off. Now, dropping a glass in a pub or a bar isn't a problem. All you have to do is go to the bar staff and say, I'm sorry. I've dropped a glass, and they will happily go over and clear it up. No problem at all. But they don't. They just walk off. Now, the half-decent ones will try and be helpful, although actually this isn't helpful, but I understand where they're coming from, and they try and kick it, off, kick it over into a corner carefully. Others, the I had to say, the majority of them, will simply walk off and leave it there, waiting for someone to trip over and cut their face over. It's just rudeness, isn't it? Do you find that? What are your examples of rudeness, boys and girls? Get your emails in. My email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. I am, I think... In my later years, becoming a little more clumsy, boys and girls. My best friend Ron says I'm very clumsy. Here are some examples. Uh, I am on Monday in a couple of days' time. I'm to have a water meter fitted. Now, in the states, I uh, don't know about Australia or other places, but I think in the states you've already got these. Here in the UK, we now have a choice. We either have uh, water rates set, which depending on the size of your property, is the amount of money you pay, OK? Or you can have a water meter fitted, so you are charged simply for as much water as you use. Now, personally speaking, I don't think that the water companies here in the UK are privately owned. Now, personally speaking, I don't go along with the water companies being private, I really don't. I think things like water, gas, electricity, 
um, public transport, um, railways, I think they should all be national, nation, nationalized. Now, I'm a, I'm a conservative. OK, I'm a conservative voter, but I think those things should be nationalised. I think they should be for the people and indeed uh, not for profit. Anyway, so that's how it is here. We have private water. So you can either have rates or more recently, I say more recently in the last, I think, 10 years or so, you can have a meter fitted. Now, the thing is, I live in a three bedroom house on my own. OK, so my water rates are quite high because I am paying for a three bedroom house, even though there's only me here. So I've done some research. I put a little message uh, on my Facebook to ask anyone um, if they knew if they had water meters and what have you. And by far, the majority of people that had water meters seem to be better off having one, except one. Uh, a dear friend of mine called Dawn. Uh, who lives, I think, in Brighton or Hove now. And um, she said she had a water meter and uh, her water, uh, 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 her, her bills jumped quite considerably. But everyone else has said, no, it's a good idea, especially if you're in a larger house, one person living here, you know. So that is coming Monday. Now, in order to save even more money, boys and girls, I have fitted two large water butts. Great big lovely, uh, are they brown or green? Let me have a look out the window and I shall tell you, I can't remember that. I think they're green. Oh, uh, hang on, what colour? Yes, they're green. One moment. Was just looking out there. Oh, can I sit back down again? Thank you. Uh, yes, I have green water butts and they're the large ones, I think 210 or 240 litres and there's two of them next to each other. And, uh, as always, boys and girls, it says on the instructions, easy to fit. Easy to fit, it says. All you have to do is put, like, a couple of little pipes on the, um, uh, on the water butts. So these are all included with what comes through the, um, uh, through when, when it's delivered, okay? So you put these two pipes on there, and then you simply... I use the words in the instruction leaflet. You simply have to cut a 10 millimetre piece out of the downpipe coming from the gutter. OK. And, um, and, and that has to be 20 millimetres below the top of the water butts. And I must admit, when they came, I thought, oh, shall I get someone to do this? And then, you know, I looked on the internet and I, I typed in water butt installers, that sort of thing. I couldn't find anyone doing that. Couldn't find anyone doing it at all. So I thought, well, I better have a go. So I got the old hacksaw out. And holding the, um, you didn't need to hold it, actually, because it's screwed against the wall. The, the downpipe, I started sawing. Well, for some reason, the saw would not go in a straight line, boys and girls. It would not go in a straight line. So it ends up going kind of down. And then you try and bend it back again, but it weren't having any of it. So eventually I cut through this water pipe, and it didn't look very good at all, did it? It was nowhere near, it wasn't a straight, it wasn't just not a straight cut. It was like at 45 degrees. The, the saw went down. I thought, oh, well, I don't know what to do now. What, what do I do now? Anyway, so this time I unscrewed the um, pipe. And at that point, the entire thing fell down and ended up in the garden. So I'm a bit pissed off now. You know, because I know, you know what I'm like with DIY? Regular listeners to the show will know I'm not, a DIY, I'm not good at DIY. Things go wrong. And as my friend tells me, I'm clumsy. He likes to tell me that. He says, you're so clumsy. I know I'm clumsy. I'm so clumsy that I shouldn't be doing DIY. It's as simple as that. It's all very well saying, oh, you had a go. You have a go and you muck it up even worse. I really shouldn't do these things. Are you the same? Have you got any DIY things that you've done that haven't worked out? Do let me know. Send in an email. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. I want to hear about your DIY things that have gone wrong, OK? Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Anyway, so this thing's up. So I thought, oh, well. I thought, well, I'll take advantage of this. Then I picked up the thing, and where where the saw had gone, it had gone over 
the two little lines I'd marked has gone further than that. So I thought, oh, well, I'll cut it anyway. So I've cut this bit so it's now straight. Oh, oh, that's the other thing. The saw then broke. The hacksaw broke. <laughs> so I got my electric jigsaw, jigsaw out, black and decker, was it Bosch? My Bosch jigsaw out. And then I cut, and it was so much easier with the Bosch jigsaw, jigsaw, I have to say. So I cut along the two lines, and now I've got, of course, two pieces of pipe, right? So, I put the top one back in very carefully. That, that was hard, because it obviously, it's got a slot in the hole that's at the top where the gutter is, okay? So I put that bit in, put in there, and then, Holding it, because otherwise it'll fall out again, because remember, it's not screwed against the wall now. Holding it carefully, I got this rain diverter kit that comes with the water button. Now, the idea is you attach this to the top of the pipe, okay? And then that bottom bit of pipe you put in there, and then from that is a little hole, and a little pipe comes out and goes into your water butt. So when the rain comes down, instead of going straight down into the drains, it goes into your water butt. So I did that. I put the rain diverter kit on the end, I put the little little pipe on the bottom, and then I tried to get the pipe in the very last bit of pipe at the bottom. And it's got this, like, square connector. So I'm pulling and tugging, and guess what happened? The square, square connector broke. So that brought I thought, oh no. At that point, I think I threw the whole lot on the floor and I just wish I'd never attempted it. Anyway, um, so I thought, well, I better get one of these. So I thought, well, where can I get one of those? So first of all, I went to Wix. Okay, Wix. And bought this thing that looked the same. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. I went to Screwfix. That was it. I went to Screwfix in Bracknell. Now, I don't know if I told you this story a couple of days ago, uh, a couple of shows ago. I walked in there with this part. On the side were a couple of chaps looking through books, like catalogues. I didn't know what they were doing. Now, I've never been in Screwfix, okay? Never been in there. I put this thing on the desk. Young girl came out, about 25. She said, yes. I said, um, have you got one of those, please? And she went, <sighs> and she yanked out this catalogue, slammed it down, started looking for it like that, at which point my said, oh, my mate said, he said, oh, it's like an Argos for builders in here. And I looked around and I said to this woman, I said, are we supposed to look through the book first and tell you what we want? And she said, it would help, just like that, it would help. And so I said to her, I said, I'll tell you what, we're go, I swear. And I went. And I complained. I complained. I went, went straight on the email when I got home and I complained um, to the head office. And they sent me a letter saying that they'd had problems with their management staff there recently. And uh, would I leave it with them to deal with? So I was kind of happy with that. Well, I wasn't happy with that, but what can you do? I will never go in Screwfix again. That is the worst piece of customer service I have ever had. Screwfix... Customer service, Bracknell office, round about um, halfway through August, young girl in there serving on the till. You disgust me. You absolutely disgust me. You really do. People like you shouldn't have a job, okay? You should be chucked out of there. How dare you speak to a customer like that? So that's that. With that, I went into Wix. Went into Wix. Uh, a bloke in there, a little bit older than me, probably about 55. I said, can you help me? Have you got one of these, please? Oh, yes, sir. Let's let's have a look around here. And he very pleasantly took it from me. We went around there. And he gave me what looked like the same thing. He said, oh, that's the closest I can get to it. OK, so thank you very much. I paid for it about three quid or something like that. That wasn't expensive. And um came home and I thought, well, and I chucked it on there. And guess what? It was too small. It wouldn't go in a hole. I thought, oh, no. So then... I got this measuring thing, measuring tape, and I measured it, and it was indeed two two millimetres smaller than the last one. So, of course, the pipes wouldn't slot together. Oh, dear me. Right, so I've got all this thing laying there in the garden, and I'm getting more and more pissed off now. 
So I've then gone on, I think we then went to Sainsbury's own base, they didn't have them. Looked on the B&Q website, they didn't have them. In the end, I looked at the thing and typed into Google the manufacturer's name, and that came up with uh, a place, I can't remember, something or other, plumbing. Um, where are they? And I found one on there, which had the same measurements and everything, and I ordered it online. And um, so that was it. That, that was on the Friday. Okay. The next Friday, I rung them up. And I said to them, I said, hello, sorry to trouble you, I ordered something um, last week. Uh, da, da, da. He said, well, it takes seven days to, take, to, to, to come, mate. Now, it, it was now Friday, OK? It was now Friday, and I'd ordered it the Friday before. I said, well, I ordered it last Friday, mate. He said, no, nah, seven days, mate. Seven working days. I thought, oh, you know. I thought, OK. He says, um, he said, I'll tell you what, I'll have a look for you. So he typed in his thing. He said, oh, yeah. He said, it'll be with you by Wednesday. OK, thanks very much. Put the phone down. I thought, oh. Yeah, this thing's been laying there for a week now in the garden. Um, so, uh, no, that's a lie. That part of it was laying in the garden for a week. So what I did temporarily was put the water butt in place and just had the downpipe going straight into the top of the water butt. So it did rain a bit, and let me tell you, it, it fills up quickly, that old water butt, doesn't it? It's surprising how much water comes off the roof, but it's not clean. It's like got a brown tinge to it, and there's leaves and everything in there. So it's, I mean, it's not drinking water. I don't suppose you can drink water. Um, I'm, I'm assuming you can't. That's come off the roof, and maybe unless you boil it. But even then, it's dirty. It looks dirty. You know. Anyway. So we've done that. Um, Wednesday, Wednesday, this item arrives. And I thought, you know, why has it taken seven days for that? I know it said seven days. And he said seven days. But you do wonder sometimes whether or not, you know, they, they get your order. And they said, well, it's seven days. So we'll put that on the side for seven days and you can wait that long. It's a bit like the post office, really. You know, with this, this uh, here in the UK, we have first and second class stamps. First class stamps are supposed to, first class letters with letters or um, items with first class stamps on them should get there quicker than the second class ones. OK. But another postman doesn't come and deliver, a separate postman doesn't come and deliver the second class items, right? And the second class items don't go in a different letterbox. And this, I've never understood this. So, when you post a second class letter, and they get it at the other end, in the post box, and the postman comes and collects, he puts them all in a big sack, and he takes them to his little sorting office. When they get those back at the sorting office, do they, does someone, <laughs> or, I mean it's madness, someone or a machine pull, pulls out the second class items, what do they do with those? Do they just put them on a shelf and they write that second, that can wait two days? What's the point of that? <laughs> it's just absolute madness, isn't it? What do they do with them? Do they literally take them out of the bag and put them on a shelf? Uh, no, that's second class. That can wait two days. What's the point of that? You might as well just bring them with the other ones, Martin, yeah? <laughs> this, this world is getting madder and madder as we go on. So I've waited seven days for this part to arrive. It's arrived eventually. So, OK. And guess what? It fitted perfectly. And, you know... When you've had a bad experience like that and suddenly something falls into place, you do feel good, don't you? So I then managed to get the pipe together, put it against the wall, screwed it on, attached my thing, and it's all nicely in place now. And it's already collected some water, boys and girls, I'm very pleased to announce to you. I am. Cut the paving stones underneath it to, um, to make it uh, quite flat. But it's already working, so I'm quite pleased about that. So I'm ready for my visit for the water meter. And once that water meter's gone, then I'm charged for, like, every drop of water I used. So, obviously, the less that you can use, then the better it is. So, the idea of the water butts is that you can use that for things like water in the garden. Presumably, you could flush the toilet with that as well. I suppose you can get a bucket and flush the toilet with water 
um, that's come out of the uh, uh, water butt as well. I'm sure you can't drink water from a water butt. Does anyone know that? If you do know the answer to that, please let me know. My email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Two water butts are connected together with a little pipe. So when one's full up, you see, the other one, the water should then go down the next pipe into the next one. It's all very clever. Very, very clever indeed. So I'm, I'm pleased to say the job was complete. But that's, that's just one example. You see, I'm very clumsy. Very, very clumsy. Two other clumsy things this week. So I'm around my mate's house, um, helping him cut down some bushes because he's having a new fence put in uh, next week. £1,600 for a fence, dear. It's dear, isn't it? It's not that big a garden. £1,600 for this fence. Anyway, so he's having that done. And uh, he's got to dig up all the bushes, for, would at least cut back all the bushes first. So I was helping him do that the other day. And um, I've, I've got my electric um, hedge trimmer, which my sister bought me for Christmas. Wonderful piece of kit. Zzzz. And uh, then I knocked over two plant pots. Not one, two. Yes, ceramic ones, not plastic ones. That's right, not ceramic. Um, uh, well, you know, clay pots. So they smashed on the ground. Okay. And then the day after, I was in the um, living room, his living room, and he put a cup of tea on the floor without me realising. And I kicked that over onto his, onto his sofa. I'm a very, very clumsy person. I am very, very clumsy. So I, re I really don't like doing DIY things anymore, I don't think. I think we're going to have to give up with that sort of thing. Uh, and the other thing with that part that I had um, delivered, get this right, remember, it took seven days to come, the part was £2.31, and, pence, and it is li a very light plastic thing. Do you know what the delivery was? £5.99. How bloody ridiculous is that? £5.99 to have a part delivered. £2.31 for the part. Outrageous. What are your DIY disasters? Disasters? Let me know. Email address chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. All right. Let's do some emails. Hello to Matthew. I sent this in a couple of weeks ago. Hello, Matthew, in Canada. Hello, Chris. I'd like to start by thanking you for making my day. I was so happy when you told me by Facebook that there was a chat show coming up. It was great to catch up on some of the things we have missed since March. Yes, uh, regular listeners will know that I disappeared for six months. Here we are again. I do remember, actually, someone saying, why don't you have the whole of the summer and spring off and come back in the fall or autumn, which indeed uh, seems to have been what's happened just naturally, really. I've been very glad that you've been come, that you have become part of the team over at Reach On Air, as you've been able to do a bit of chat on there, but I must be honest and say that I definitely prefer a full show of chat. Yes, well I'm not on there now, I was doing a little music and chat show on uh, Reach On Air, uh, but I found it a bit hard going, um, having to be in the same place at the same time every day at that time of the morning, and my time's for work starts in the evening are constantly changing. Okay, so it became too different and I, difficult and I had to give that up, unfortunately, which is a shame because I was enjoying doing that. Matthew says, I'm very happy to hear that your Toyota Yaris is treating you well, except for the sat-nav, of course. Yeah, not, not, not keen on the sat-nav. Oh, apparently, I've got an Apple iPhone. Apparently the next iPhone or the iPhone 5 or the next so software upgrade on the iPhones that we all have at the moment, I do believe is going to include uh, a sat-nav. I think that's right, or at least maps or something. Anyone know that? The next Apple, either the, either the next software upgrade, which I gather is happening next week sometime, or the next iPhone, the iPhone 5, one, one or the other or both, is going to have a software upgrade to, um, uh, to give us a free sat-nav or, or free maps, which would be handy. But the sat-nav on the um, Toyota Yaris, not happy with that at all, no. He says, uh, as I'm looking f uh, into getting one myself in the upcoming future, what a Yaris, the car's fantastic. No complaints at all about the car. Reliable, quiet, fast, love it. 
I didn't realise until I first heard that you were getting one that they were available in the UK. But then, when I went down to a Toyota dealer, he pointed out to me that Toyota actually designed the car to be very universal with its design, so it could easily be adaptable to both left and right-handed drive, which is brilliant. I'm very happy to hear that you are doing so well on fuel mileage. Yes, I'm getting, I can get 70, 72 miles a gallon on that. And that's one of the reasons I've been wanting to purchase this vehicle. So thanks very much for passing on the review to us. Yes, fantastic car. Incidentally, I've got the diesel model. OK, Matthew, I don't know how, how you drive. That's the only thing. Now, I'm a bit older. You're, I think, I think you're 10, 15 years younger than me, maybe more than that. Um, but... No disrespect, but young people tend to drive faster and harder. Now, I drive carefully. On the motorway, I'm doing 60 mile an hour. OK, I watch the revs all the time. I keep it down. I take it nice and easy. That's why I get 70 to 72 miles a gallon. You know, if you drive it hard, you'll get a lot less. It's all about how you drive it. It's not uh, uh, just to do with how the car is. All right. He says, so on your show... You had mentioned a bit about the migraines you've been dealing with. I find that I'm usually likely to get them when my sleep schedule goes through major changes, especially if it affects it due to a lack of sleep. My doctor has just recommended keeping to the most consistent schedule to, as possible to avoid migraines, as well as to being exposed to heat for extended periods of time, as he claims that it's another very huge trigger trigger in developing them. Yes, well, since um, since stopping the REACH show, uh, I'm certainly not as tired as I was, and no more migraines. That's stopped again. It's definitely to do with tiredness in my case. He says, I'm not sure if you've been following my activity on Facebook the last few months, but if you have been, you will have noticed that I've really started to try and do my part in helping people as much as I can through offering them great life advice, as well as the wisdom I have managed to obtain so far to help people through their tough days or sometimes simply just providing them with hope and direction for their future. If you feel comfortable and so choose to, I encourage you to let your listeners and viewers look at me up on Facebook. My username is Bootman2020, that's B O O T M A N. 2020, OK? Once again, that's Facebook. His username is Bootman2020. I will gladly help as many people out there as I possibly can. Because, as you know, sometimes life can be a little tough and having positive thoughts and people in your life is essential. Oh, yes. Um, I know. Yeah, it's... It is important to have positive people around you. I think I think you're quite right with that. I, I actually, Martin, believe it or not, uh, you know, watching this, you'd never know. I actually do suffer uh, sometimes. I get very, very down sometimes. Usually it's, it's to do, it's kind of, how can I explain? It's kind of usually schedule related. Um, if I expect something to happen and that doesn't happen, I get quite down about that. You know, it's, uh, it's usually... Um, uh, or it could be anything. You know, do, do you understand what I mean? For example, if, if I'm in today waiting for a delivery and it doesn't come, I get really down about that. I know it might sound a silly thing to you, but it, but I do. I, 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 I certainly have a schedule. If I don't get to the, my swimming pool for some reason and I have to do something else, I get a little bit down about that. You know, as far as I'm concerned, I go swimming Monday to Friday, around about sometime between 10 and 12. And I, and I hate that. I hate arranging things and them not having, not happening. You know, uh, that really annoys me. He says, so I thought, because I'm reliable. I'm really reliable, Martin. That's how I get so much work. You know, I'm certainly not the best DJ or karaoke host or, or quiz master around i'm sure i'm not the best one but if you book me i will be there and i will be there on time and the only time you won't see me is if i'm very unfortunate and i have broken down or if i'm really really ill 
And then you'll get a phone call. I won't now just turn up. You'll get a phone call. But it's unlikely, extremely unlikely. They're the only times you won't see me turn up somewhere. There's so many people, they come out with crap excuses. Oh, I've got a sore throat, can't turn up for work and all this old rubbish. You know, it's a joke, it really is. These people, they want jobs. They, they do make me laugh, they want jobs. A lot of bar staff. Now, they're not the best paid in the world, bar staff. It's a, it's a low paid job here in the UK. But, you know, they have the job and then they go sick because they've gone out somewhere or something like that. It's a joke, it really is. You need to be reliable in this life. I'm reliable. Very, very reliable. Um, Martin says, So I thought I would take this opportunity to fill you in on some things that have been going on with me since my last email. One of the highlights for me was sending Her Majesty the Queen <coughs> a letter of congratulations on her Diamond Jubilee and receiving a response back. It will be something I will be switched. I will, I will be sure to, cher to cherish. I should think you were. That's a nice thing to do. Send, um, send uh, the Queen something. Because we've had a fantastic year here in the UK. With the Diamond Jubilee celebrations and the con... Although the concert was, was dire at the beginning. Did you see the Diamond Jubilee concert at the beginning? They were all out of tune. Even Cliff Richards. Cliff Richards was out of tune on the Diamond Jubilee concert. Did you see it? Oh, it was awful. But as the show went on, it got better. I don't know why. JLS were a bit out of tune. Don't know what went on there. Then, of course, we had the fantastic um, Olympics. And what an opening and closing ceremony. Eh? What an opening and closing ceremony that was. Fantastic Olympics. Followed by the Paralympics. Wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And uh, do you remember the opening ceremony at the Paralympics? Um, those those people, they are superhumans, aren't they? You see them running along on those little uh, plastic feet thing. I, what are they called now? I think they're called blades. Running along on those blades. And what what done it for me was the opening ceremony where there was this guy, he had no legs, and he was he was dancing on his hands. Do you remember him? Did you see the Paralympics opening ceremony? Absolutely awesome. Awesome, oh, and really done me in watching that. I was so proud of that man. And the other guys, you know, hanging from the um, things coming down from the sky and all that business. Just fantastic. I haven't actually seen the Paralympics closing ceremony yet. I've got that on tape and on the, I say tape, on the hard drive. And I should be watching that at a later date. But we've had a really good year here. Really good. Uh, and of course, all those, all those idiots who kept moaning how terrible it would be and it would all be a disaster and the traffic <coughs> would be in absolute chaos. Didn't happen. The traffic actually flowed freer while the Olympics on were on, than it did normally. That is the truth of it. That is the truth of it. And then you get in the sh all the shops in the West End were complaining that they weren't getting many customers while the Olympics was on. Well, you told us not to come into London. So we didn't. No one went to London. Or very few people did. We were told, don't go to London unless you have to. So we didn't go. And now you moan that there's no one in the shops. You can't have it always. So bloody stupid, some people. Stupidity. Another big highlight was that I've made some great mates with nine people who have recently moved to Canada from the UK. Oh, is there space for me as well? Will I get any work there, Matt? Can you get me some work there? Uh, and he goes on to say, and have been able to get them uh, used to the change of pace over here, as well as help them settle into their new homes and understand what life in Canada is all about. I must admit it's been a great experience. Canada is currently in need of workers in most industries, and recently employers have been offering contracts to UK citizens as it's the quickest way to import workers due to the excellent relationship that being part of the Commonwealth has formed between our two countries, allowing our economy to remain strong, which is fantastic. 
Yeah, I'm I'm a great believer in the Commonwealth and the various Commonwealth countries. That let's be honest, you know, the Queen holds us all together, doesn't she? I really am, and I do feel that the politicians have kind of, in many ways, pushed this to the sides in favour of stronger ties with Europe. And I'm just so, so I'm not anti-European, but I think. We do share more with other countries of the Commonwealth than we do with Europe. I really do. We have a lot more in common with people in Canada, Australia, uh, the, some of the Caribbean countries, of course. I do feel more of a, an allegiance with them than we do to Europe, I personally. But it seems a lot of the politicians don't worry about that anymore, which is a huge shame. Huge shame. He says, uh, what do you think about that, boys and girls? Any comments on that uh, little thing? Do you feel closer to the Commonwealth than you do to Europe? We're not talking about distances here. We're talking about, you know, relationships. I do feel very close, certainly to Australia. Certainly to Australia. And the other Commonwealth countries, you know, so many of them. I do feel closer to those than I do for Europe. On another note... I know that curry dis dishes, curry, can't say it. On another note, I know that curry dishes are a lot easier to come by in the UK. And I was wondering if you know of anyone personally that may have a great recipe for a dish called butter chicken. Anyone got a recipe for that? Butter chicken. Send it in, please. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. As I have been trying to find one over here, and so far the recipes I have tried were sadly not very good. Any help would be appreciated. There we are. Someone needs our help, boys and girls. Come on, send them in. Finally, I was going to ask you about your Olympic experiences while the Games were on. Did you manage to maintain your sanity? Yeah, I did. It was great. It was great. Was your daily life quite affected when the Games was on? No, not at all. Not even a small bit. Life, certainly for me, was not affected. End of story, really. I watched a bit on the telly. There was nothing, I've got to be honest, I didn't sit down specifically and watch any of the sports. But now and again, I flicked it over. And once I, once I was on to whatever sport it was, I was kind of glued to it for a while watching it. Did you notice that there were a lot more patrons in the pubs while you were um, working during that time? No, no, about the same. Did you end up taking uh, in any of the events? No, I didn't go to any of them, no. I wish I could have managed to get over there to take in one or two and cheer on both Team GB and Team Canada. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I would like to have gone, I suppose, but I, I, it's not something I'm, I'm desperate to go to, an Olympic event. A Barry Manilow concert, yes. It's now been a few months since I last went to see a Barry Manilow concert at the O2 in London, and I'm getting withdrawal symptoms, boys and girls. You can only watch that DVD so many times. You know. Well, I say you can... Have I got it here? I've got the... Because uh... I've got that somewhere. Where is it now? Oh, here it is. This, you've got to get this. Barry Manilow fans, you've got to get this. This is the best live Barry Manilow DVD He's ever bought out. Barry Manilow, live in London with the Royal Philharmonic Concert Orchestra. OK, you've got to get this. Deluxe edition. Double CD. You can get this on Amazon, I think. And it's all on there. Fantastic. But uh, I would like to go. I, I, I have a dreadful feeling he's not coming to the UK next year. So uh, I think I'm going to have to travel to go and see him somewhere. I did take my niece to see him uh, at the O2 in May, and she she loves him as well. Which she, and she's only 20, 20, what is she, 24 or 25, I think she is, my niece. She had a baby in about a week. It's all very exciting. Another baby is coming. Great Uncle Chris is waiting to receive another child. The stork is flying. Um, one of the other things on the Paralympics... Did anyone see the blind football playing? Amazing. A blind, two blind teams of football players. Absolutely amazing. Apparently, um, there is a bell in the ball and the people play the football by listening for the bell and obviously listening to where the ball is being kicked. Amazing. I didn't actually see any of that, 
but I must look that up on YouTube. I must. Uh, there's bound to be um, some little videos on YouTube. Have a look yourself, boys and girls. Just type in blind football on the uh, search engine, okay? Matt says, anyway, thanks for taking the time to read my fairly long email today. I do so appreciate your time very much. As always, you're in my thoughts and prayers every day, Chris. Sincerely. And that's uh, lovely Matt from uh, Canada. So thanks for that uh, lovely email there, Matt. Um, hello to James Bates. Hello, James. He says, hi, Chris. I hope the migraines have gone now. Yes, they certainly have. It seems like Reach On Air is very good, but the only thing, it sounds you're tied to one spot. At least with your United Kingdom talk shows, you can do them as and when you do, uh, which sounds good if the migraines are a problem. Yeah, that, boy, they were a problem, but they've gone away now since I stopped doing those particular shows. It was making me quite tired. Sorry to hear about Katie, your cat, being peel, put on pills for life now, but at least she you knows she's OK. As for the pills with cats, don't get me started on that. My cat, I put it in her food and she just spits it out. Yes, yeah, it, yeah, it, it can be difficult sometimes. I've even been spat out, but I do get there in the end with a little persuasion. Yeah, um, she doesn't like it, does she? But I do, I do eventually get her to take her pill. I'm glad that Ron is OK and I hope his cats are OK too. He's got five cats. As for sat-navs, they are all expensive to update and for maps like Europe, unless you're a businessman or a truck driver doing a lot, people will probably only use a sat-nav aboard rarely. Well, I, I don't. This is what I say with a Toyota um, sat-nav maps update. You could only buy them for Europe. £120. I don't want to travel. All I want is a UK map. Now, for a map update... What would I expect to pay? Twenty, twenty-five pound for my country? I'd be happy to pay that. I'm certainly not going to pay one hundred and twenty pound for the whole of Europe. Take the piss, isn't it? I'm not. I'm not paying that. He says, "Why I don't know. I can only believe it's a money-making thing, which is wrong." These companies sound like the councils. The councils are talking of box junction charges again. I hope it doesn't get out of, out of control. Well, I, I got I got one of those um, in Chelsea, a box. I, I got stuck in a box junction, uh, only for about five seconds, and a camera took a picture and it sent me a fine. Shocking, shocking. It says I hope there are more United Kingdom talk shows as they're great to listen to. So, um, thank you for that, young James Bates. Hello to Marge. Hello, Marge. Who says, when I saw the clock behind you when I'm watching your YouTube videos, it reminded me of another clock I've seen at one of my jobs. I included it with this email. Just thought it was funny how this lady has nearly the same clock as you. And indeed she does. It is nearly the same. Uh, except the lady's clock. Well, certainly the, the movement, the movement and the clock face are identical. They really are. But the top of it is in a different case, isn't it? So, I mean, it, it is similar. It is similar. Uh, oh, I haven't got these in order here. Hello to Pew46, again via YouTube. He says, Chris, you're a saint. You're back. Love it. Give me a hello and I will definitely announce this to the world. Uh, you're back where you, you belong. And that's from Pew46. No name on there. Just says Pew46. Please, boys and girls, whenever you send in a, a little message, whatever me whatever method you use, oh, I got itchy nose again, uh, YouTube or Facebook or something like that, if, you're, if your normal name isn't your username, please put your name at the bottom because I'm never quite sure who is who here, really. And I get very, very confused. Hello to Charlie Hyde's TV. Again, via YouTube, Charlie Hyde's. That's a real name. It says, I coat my dog's pills in peanut butter. I was talking about my cat taking pills. And they gobble them up in seconds. Job done. Welcome back, Chris. I don't know if I, I, that's an idea. What would she like it coated with? Or probably butter. The cat does like butter. That's an idea. That's an idea. I'm going to coat the next one in butter and see what happens. Hello to Ian. Also in Canada, in Ottawa, who says... I have your second video on now. I make my friends crazy with inane videos I make every few days. I had over 60,000 hits for reseeding the lawn video. <laughs> my channel is Duffy512. 
Some of my favourite videos, like my ants here, will get a f get few hits. I guess you can never predict when you will get a worldwide hit, and that's from end. No, I don't think you can. Um, my friend Charlie Hyde gets millions, millions of people for his. I get a couple of hundred if I'm lucky. That's all right. Doesn't matter. It's not all about numbers. A lot of people think it is. They say it's all about numbers, and it's not. It's not all about numbers. Hello to Stella Andrews. Hello, Stella. You're right, darling. We were having a long conversation on Facebook the other day. Who says, love the video cast. Thanks, Chris. By the way, I change my bedding every day. You never know, I might get lucky. Do you think so, Stella? Do you really think so? Because <laughs> we were talking about changing bedding on the last show, weren't we? Um... Hello to Being Riley, a new listener, boys and girls. Hello, my name is Riley, and I'm a long-time listener. Started in mid-2006. Now, of course, so Riley is one of the, the secret listeners, you see. And I do wonder, how many more of those are there? People that have been listening or watching the show for years and years and have never written in. How many of you are there, I wonder? Riley is one of them, and is his first letter. First time emailing, though, just wanted to say hi, that I'm happy you're back, and that this last podcast had me cracking up, especially when you got up to look out, look out for your neighbour. Oh, you've got to, got to watch out for them, dear. She's got a new car. She's got a new car next door. Oh, it's lovely. A red Audi. Beautiful car. I think it's an, an A1. Beautiful car. Beautiful car. Uh, and he says, um, most of the time I do not watch the videos, but I was off from work today, so I watched your last two shows. You're one of the funniest people I know, and your show always brings a smile to my face. Anyway, again, welcome back. Thank you, Riley. And Riley is in, because I asked him where he was. Oh, did I print that one off? Oh, Riley, you did write to me where you were. Didn't I print that off? One moment, please. Checking my email inbox now. Where does it say, my friend Riley? Riley, 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 maybe I didn't print you off. Oh, it's not there, Riley. I think... I think you're in Canada as well, aren't you? Hang on, I think you might be on my mobile phone. Are you on my mobile phone? One moment, please. Can you just talk amongst yourselves for a second? I'll just go and get it now. Won't be, won't be a second. Won't be a minute. Back in a second. Just go downstairs. Got it. <sighs> One moment, please. I'm back. Oh, hang on a minute. Maybe it's not on here. <sighs> Where are you, Riley? Marjorie Stella. Hi. Oh no, that's that's the that's the one I've just read out. Oh, Riley, I can't find your email. It was here. Maybe I've. Maybe I've um. Left it in the uh. The, the Virgin inbox or whatever it's called. Oh dear. I'm determined to find this. If you're good enough to send in an email, then I must find it to read out, lovey. <laughs> Sorry, I'll get the top my Tourette's is happening again, isn't it? <laughs> Tourette's, dear, Tourette's. Who is it? Shut up, woman. Logging in, thank you. Let me check my little email thing here. Do hope it's there, because I can't remember where you are now, Riley. California, here. What was it, California, you're in? Oh, please be there, God. Please. Dear God. Please let Riley's email be there. Oh, it's not. Oh. 
Last not there, guys. Oh, I'm sorry. Not there, Riley. I can't remember where you are. Was was you in Canada as well? Did I print? I'm sure I printed that off somewhere. No, it's not there, is it? Not there. Is that it? Ha ha! I have it. I knew it was there. It's hiding from me. Hiding, hiding, dear, hiding. Uh, Riley is in Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, it, which is, uh, he, he puts a little bit about Charlotte here. Uh, nicknamed the Queen City, Charlotte and its resident country are named in honour of Charlotte of mecklenburg strelitz who had become Queen Consort of Prince George, British King George III, the year before the city's founding. A second nickname derives from the American Revolutionary War, when British commander General Cornwallis occupied the city, but was driven out by hostile residents, prompting him to write that Charlotte was not Hornet's Nest of Rebellion, leading to the nickname the Hornet's Nest. So there he is, he's in Charlotte, North Carolina. Welcome to the show, Being Riley. Nice to hear from you, sir. OK. Um, and finally today... Got some emails here. Now, Marge, <laughs> Marge, darling, please only send one message at a time because I, 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 there's all these messages from you. Look, look, and they all take up a piece of paper. 85 trees have to be cut down this week just for your emails, Marge. <laughs> and she sends these in. Apparently cats are lactose intolerant. Uh, intolerant. Yeah, know about that, actually. Uh, I do give my cat usually cat, special cat milk which I get from Sainsbury's. She says, um, you're, are you supposed to change your sheets? I didn't realise that. Well, apparently so, Marge. But, I mean, I don't bother, do you? I, I just don't bother. This is you, isn't it, Marge? Spirit Dove? Oh, you're not... People aren't putting their names at the bottom again. You're not putting your names at the bottom again, are you? Marge, is this you, Spirit Dove? Oh, God. Yes, yes, Spirit Dove, I am Marge, ha ha, but people call me Margie, I love the Marge though now, yeah, we're going to call you Marge, Spirit Dove, but if you're going to put a message on, on YouTube, please put Marge at the bottom so I know it's you, lovely, lovely Marge, and she says, Chris, don't say pussy, it's a naughty word here in the UK, in, in the USA, is it, is it really, well my pussy's downstairs, uh, the word pussy for us here in the UK means cats. Pussy cat. Here, pussy, pussy, come to Chris. Here, pussy, pussy. What does it mean there, then? It's all new to me, dear. Don't know what you mean, dear. Pussy means cat, surely. Doesn't it mean the same in the US? I don't know, dear. Um, she says, stop going on about wrinkles. A wrinkle is a trophy saying you made it this far in life. I think they are beautiful. Oh, I've got a few wrinkles, Marge. I don't know. People keep telling me to have a face job. I would not have a face job, I tell you that now. Have you seen some of the... Te look at look at um, Sylvester Stallone's mum, Jackie Stallone. <gasps> Can you imagine looking like that? All that money she's paid and she looks like that. <laughs> She says, um, Marge says, itchy nose means company is coming. Also, oh, someone's coming round because I've got an itchy nose. Itchy hand is money coming. Itchy bum means you need to buy new toilet paper. <laughs> Marge's cats are named Fuzz Bucket, Dayo Shin, Gita, Isis, Isis, Crockerfud, and Snuggle Kess. <laughs> Oh, we love cats. You've got a lot of cats there. I might have to go and order some more. Marge says, my Boston Terrier, Miss Myrtle May, aged 12 years, so that, is that a dog? It's a dog in it. Has cataracts and is blind. Oh, bless. Yet you don't dare take away her bone. <laughs> Actually, it's a bluff, but she is so evil looking, who would dare try? I did see a picture of that dog. She, she don't, she's a bit scary. I think I'd probably cross the road if I um if I ever saw that dog. To be honest, Marge. Marge says, "I wish I had a quarter of your energy. If you didn't love what you do, you you would go crazy." Oh, I know, I know, I would go crazy. I'm very lucky to be doing um 
uh, uh, stuff that I love. And uh, that's it from the show today. Thank you very much for watching, boys and girls. The email address, once again, if you want to join in by email, it's always a pleasure to hear from you, is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. All right. If you want to join me on Facebook as well, my Facebook username is Chris Reardon UK. So it's facebook.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. If you use iTunes at all, you can subscribe to both the audio and the video separately, uh, podcasts to this show, whatever you want, uh, you'll find those on YouTube. Just type in United Kingdom Talk at the top there and you can find it there. If you've got Apple TV or a smart TV, you can probably find us on there. Just type in United Kingdom Talk at the top there and uh, you should find it comes up on that as well. And finally, on YouTube, my YouTube your username is also Chris Reardon UK. So hit the subscribe button on there. If you just tick the box that said get an email every time there's a new show and you'll keep fully informed there all right chris reardon uk thank you very much boys and girls i'll see you on the next show bye bye